I've been covering cheap houses in Sicily for three years now, showing you that you can buy houses for as little as one euro. Imagine being able to buy a cheap home in Italy and live out your dreams of the Dolce Vita. Well, today, I've left Sicily to cover a new region in Italy, Calabria, where they're also selling cheap properties. I had the pleasure of meeting with Chris, who is also known as Super Savvy Travelers on YouTube. She has chosen to make Italy home and is now helping dozens of people throughout the world do the same. Your story is a little different. What set you off on this particular journey? This whole journey started um, when, you know, I, I started looking after the kids got, were grown. You know, there's a hole in your life because as a couple, you're sitting there looking at um, your goals are in common. We're, we're going to keep these kids alive. We're going to keep them alive and we're going to educate them and we're going to get them the medical care they need. And then when they go off, they're going to be great. Right. And that's a, a goal that's really all encompassing. You know, you get up, you pack the diaper bags and off you go and, you know, for years. And after that goes away, you go, what are we doing? And people say, well, we grew apart. Right. Well, that's because you didn't have a goal in common. So I said to myself, and I didn't tell Pete this, I don't think until much later, we're gonna have a goal in common. We're gonna go over and we're gonna start this new thing, whatever it is, in Italy. We're gonna learn a language. We're gonna enjoy the culture. We're gonna bring people over. And uh, by having a goal in common, we're always gonna be strong as a couple. Because if you don't have that, you, what are you doing? You know, you're gonna go off, one guy's gonna golf and the wife's gonna do something else. And before you know it, you hardly know each other. I decided I wanted something, you know, when I'm thinking, okay, what are we going to do for the rest of our lives, right? Where we want, want to be. Um, I wanted something on the Mediterranean. I really did. I love the Greek, you know, the whole Mediterranean history and vibe and everything else. And so I started looking in Greece and I thought I, was, I, thought I was going to learn the language. So I bought a Greek dictionary. Uh, I, I probably could have if I ended up there, you know, but it's like totally different. So, and, and Greece over there, the residency requirements were kind of, I didn't understand them and I didn't think it was going to work. So I stopped Greece and I started looking in south of France. I started looking in uh, Puglia, um, all these other places in the Mediterranean, you know, or, well, Puglia is Adriatic, but it was kind of the same vibe. And then I saw House Hunters International and that was right when I was looking for, for a place. And I saw the mountains and I saw the sea. I couldn't believe the price. And I saw the tiled piazza. You know, our piazza is tiled with flowers. It's, I've never seen a piazza like that before. And I went, oh my God, this is it, you know? I think the best reasons to come here actually is because it's the real Italy. And I know I'm probably gonna get just trashed on the channel for this, yeah, it's the real Italy. But when you go to places like Rome and Venice, I mean, they're very beautiful and it's, the history is amazing, the food is amazing, the culture is amazing, but there are so many tourists that it's different. I know you can take cooking classes and things in Rome. To me, they're kind of packaged. Here, it's the real deal. Every day I come across different experiences, large and small. You know, the, the San Giuseppe meal that uh, Antonello gave us last year was unbelievable. And when somebody uh, shows up at your door and they've got stuffed peppers and you're like, what is it? Where have these been all my life? You know, what are these? And um, that's, that's the beauty of down here. It's real and it's alive and it's, it's vibrant. And um, I don't know, it's all the best things in life, right? It's un, uninhibited. We had initially bought our house down there 10 years ago and we bought the ruin next to it and we renovated the whole thing and it was absolutely stunning um, and we loved it. But we're running the B&Bs and, um, and we're living here now. We bought that one as a vacation home and even as a home home, it was fine. But going up and down the hills with all the 
um, sheets and all the, the towels and all the cleaning supplies and, you know, doing all that stuff and, and climbing the stairs up from the, the historic center down below was getting to be a little bit much, you know, so, and I've got the hip thing. So we thought, well, we're here, we've got the dog. Uh, we may as well buy a house that we can really dig our teeth into because we wanted a new project. And this one came up and we went, oh my gosh, it's perfect. It's got the huge garden. It's got the chicken coop. It's got a lot of space. We can do something really, really spectacular with it. And I can just drive up and the washer is downstairs. I just throw everything in the washer, you know, have it all ready for the B&Bs, grab it and, and go out and turn them over. So um, there was a lot that went into this house. It's a great house. I mean, it's really well built and um, we just love it. It has a good feel. So this is your newest house here. Yes, yes. We moved in about maybe about four or five days ago. Four so, or five days ago. Yeah. It's fresh. And it okay. uh, it's a total redo. So be ready. Right. It's it's not the beautiful house we're you know that it will be. This is the kitchen. As you can see, it's a total redo, um, but it's functional for now. I mean, the sink works, although. Um, you know, we have plumbing issues there as well. In fact, it rains under the sink <laughs> when you turn on the faucet. So we're getting that fixed, um, but it's comfortable. I mean, it's not beautiful, but it's comfortable. And this will be uh, probably a little Sojourno area. You know, we cleaned it all up and put in the air conditioning and it's, uh, it's a very comfortable space. We have uh, an old bathroom. You can see it's a wet room. Um, and I haven't really figured out the wet room concept. <laughs> so uh, this morning, like the, the windows were all wet, the toilet paper was wet, everything was wet because I can't <laughs> figure out how that's supposed to work. Here's the bedroom and it's pretty comfy. You know, we got the air conditioning and they left this armadio, which is really nice. So um, we have that and it's relatively flat. I'll show you the, the floor in the um, Pronzo area. <laughs> Wavy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll show you with the, with the rolly suitcases yeah. what happens. You know, it's pretty wild. Down below we have a cantina, which we're going to redo okay. as an uh, autonomous apartment. And it has the wood supports. And we were thinking, well, we could salvage those. But we're thinking, no, no, just redo this so that it's, they call it cement armata, which is, you know, cement and metal and, you know, yeah, yeah. super strong. And I'm like, let's do that here. Uh, I'm not in love with the beams myself. I know that's blasphemy in Italy, but I'm not. Yeah. And uh, I like the elegance of the high ceilings with the, you know, crown molding and stuff like that. Gotcha. My favorite thing. So watch your head coming up. Okay. So this whole part is going to be gone. So the whole thing is going to be a terrace, which would be beautiful. The, from left to right? Yeah. Oh yeah. man, that's yeah. going to be amazing. Here you have nice high ceilings. They're, they're mm -hmm. about the same height as downstairs. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you got your kitchen sojourno probably right here. Um, this will be maybe, or your kitchen pronzo, your kitchen and your uh, dining room area. Mm -hmm. And then living room area here. Yeah. And then what I want to do is put a window here and then um, some glass in the door because we have this garden we're going to put outside. Gotcha. Okay, so here's the yard. That's the chicken coop there, and then there's like a hog pen on the other side. I think we'll make that a chicken coop as well. You don't want hogs. I can't kill them, you know? Pursue I'm not going to kill it. <laughs> you know, fall in love with it, and then it'll oh, be yeah, a big yeah. expensive pet, which I don't need. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we have this idea. So we're going to do the chicken coop and a little path, and then the huge kitchen garden, and then a pool over there, and um, big seating area, you know, for entertaining and that kind of thing. So it's going to be a real nice uh, situation when it's done. Well, I would really describe the Calabria region as uh, really a diverse region. I mean, there are so many different influences in this region um, in, in all ways. I mean, from the Byzantine influences, Albanese, um, Greek, that kind of thing. Um, super rich in history because Calabria and Southern Italy was the Magna Grecia back in the day and a very important part of um, Greece, where you know the culture and the government and all those things came from. So arising out of that, you, you have this region, that first of all, is beautiful. Like the scenery around here is just stunning. The sea is gorgeous, the Mediterranean. And then you have a whole breadbasket of agricultural products that come out of here. You know, you've got the, um, you've got the olives, you've got the grapes, you've got 
all kinds of different fruits. Um, it just is really, really a self-sustaining kind of a region here. As far as the people, there is a certain warmth to them. I think what the uh, Calabrians have discovered is the secret to happiness, which everybody's looking for. And what it is, is when you help other people, like when you help someone else, look how happy you become. Even if it's just helping somebody with their groceries and they're grateful. And they realize that that is the secret to happiness in life. So they look for ways to help you with things. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you're stopped on the side of the road or if you're looking for something, they will go out of their way to help you and to make you feel comfortable and welcomed. The visual landscape here is, it is kind of diverse, but it was actually the thing that really, really drew me here. Because when you look in, in Rome and Tuscan, you got that beautiful Tuscan uh, vibe, which is gorgeous. But when you come down here, it's wild, right? You have these, these huge mountains jutting up out of the, you know, out of the, um, the ground. Some of them just without, you know, without even like making a mountain, it's just like one stone sticking up and it's wild, you know? And you're like, well, what is this? And all of the greenery and everything else. And then you've got the sea, which when you see it, you know, during summer, it's beautiful. There's no question. But after a rainstorm, when it's got all those different layers of blue, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. The charm of the old towns is really, I think, inherent in the history and the architecture, really. Much of our village was, was built in the 1700s. So it's, it's older than the U.S., okay? Our, our old house was older than the U.S., which is really kind of mind-boggling when you think about it. The villages used to be overrun by brigands and pirates, and they all had walls around them. Uh, occasionally, the walls would be breached, and, and you know, all, all sorts of atrocities would occur. And uh, um, Salvatore was up taking down the wall in somebody's renovation a couple of years ago, and he says, oh, we found a head in the wall. And I'm like, a head? And, and he said, well, it's an old head. You know, don't worry, it's an old head. And I'm like, it's an old head in the wall. Okay, why is it there? So then I'm thinking, I gotta find out. This is a mystery that I can't have. Like, I wanna know why. I think, here's what I think, because I watch a lot of crime stories. I think that it was a jealous lover uh, murdered this guy, right? Back before they had DNA, and fingerprinting and all that stuff, they probably dressed the body in different clothes and tossed it somewhere and hid the head so they could never identify it and said, this guy went off to uh, you know, America or whatever. That's what I think happened because that would be pretty smart, but uh, who knows, who knows? It was just a head and now it's in the cemetery. <laughs> Hilarious story. <laughs> I know. Uh, most of our guys are looking at retirement. So in order to get an elective residence visa here, you have to have a certain amount of passive income coming in. So they, you know, they, you can set up your retirement funds or your IRAs or whatever and have them become income, okay? Social Security, I think, counts any sort of rental income and that kind of thing, uh, payments from your uh, pensions and whatnot count from what I recall. That's of course a legal question which I shouldn't weigh in on. However, that's my understanding. Uh, some are just over here for three months at a time and then go home and come back for another three months and that sort of thing. So it, it really depends. If you have citizenship, if you have um, EU citizenship, you can work here. There is the new digital NOBAD visa, which I think is gonna be a game changer for a lot of people and make it possible for a lot of people who really want to come over here and live here and work here um, to do so without having the uh, passive income requirements. Um, the digital nomad visa is going to bring families back because it's great that we're bringing all these retirees over, but what happens when we're gone? You know, do they fall into the same sort of situation they were in? But if they bring families over and those families stay and the families work, and that kind of thing. I think it's that's the key to repopulating all these little hill towns and villages because who wouldn't want to live and raise their family here? It's inexpensive, you're being paid in dollars. Your dollar goes a long way now. I mean, the dollar is stronger than I've ever seen it in the whole 10, 15, or 10 12 years that we've been here. 
Calabria is one of the least expensive areas in, I think, in Europe and certainly in Italy. Um, up north, yes, everything's expensive, and especially if you go to the, you know, we call it the trifecta, you know, the Venice, Rome, and Florence, right? They are hugely expensive because everybody goes there. But when you start moving out into the smaller villages, the hill towns especially, uh, not only do they have their own particular magic, but they get cheaper. And then as you come south, especially in Calabria, so much of it is just like Amalfi. Like if you come down from Sapri through Marate and you come down all the way down to Reggio Calabria, so much of it is like the Amalfi Coast. You have the same crystal blue waters, you have the same rugged mountains dropping into the sea, you have the same postcard images that you see in Amalfi, but it's not Amalfi and it's not Amalfi prices. It's, it's I think we, we decided that there was, it's like maybe a third of what you would pay or even less, you know, depending on what you buy. So as far as real estate, as it's a lot cheaper. As far as um, food and cost of living, it's ridiculously cheap. I mean, you can have a, a crazy meal for, you know, 20 bucks at the Bella Vista where we just were this afternoon. Okay, the cost of living per month varies on, on a lot of things. If you have a car, of course, that's gonna be a lot more expensive. Gas is not cheap here. It's not cheap in Italy or really in Europe from what I've seen. So the expenses as far as um, gas and things like that, it is about 195 a liter. It was up to 207, I think, for a while. So a liter is obviously different than a gallon. There's about, what, four liters in a gallon or something like that. So you have to do the math in your head on that. Um, gas is not cheap but everything's pretty close together. And Pete and I have discovered e-bikes. And a lot of times people, if they're not residents here, they can't buy a car. So they have to do the car rental thing, which is really expensive. But you can get e-bikes now and you can go all the way down to Scalea, you can go to San, uh, San Nicola, you can go to Praia Mare. You, you can get e-bikes that have a hundred uh, kilometer range. Probably, I would say you could do pretty well as a couple for say 1500 euros a month without a car. I think it'd be pretty easy to get by on that amount of money if you buy in the local markets and um, you know, cook yourself or even go out. It's, it's not very expensive. Okay, so if you start with like, like a total room, um, you could probably get something like that for 10 to 25,000, depending on the size, where it's located in the village and that kind of thing. Uh, again, you're looking at some pretty big renovation costs there because you have to redo the, you know, the, the roof. You have to redo the, they call them the solio. It's the floor slash ceilings. You have to redo um, all the electrical and plumbing, which most of the time you have to kind of do that anyway. It's kind of a given because it's old. Um, so those can be more expensive to fix up than, you know, you get into them for nothing, but then there's a lot of renovation costs. Uh, another one is like, uh, there's another level up where you have to redo everything on the inside, but structurally it's sound. You can be in and out just with the, the cost and the renovation cost for about 120,000, not including the, um, the cost for the new tile and the, the signing and all that stuff, the sale costs. Up here, we all the ones that just needed a little bit of love are pretty much gone. That was the first thing that our guys were, were getting because I, that's what I told them to get, it was the best deal. You come in, everything's structurally done, maybe there's a little structural work here and there, but mostly you just take out and put in new tiles, you put in a new kitchen, you do all of these things. Very inexpensive to get those up and going, and you could, you could pick one up for 50, 60K. I know of one that's still in the back of the village, it's actually quite nice, and it's big, for about 69K, I think. So there's still a few available, but those were the ones that went first. When you get into the bigger houses that have all been redone, you're talking over 100,000, 150 maybe. Um, and it depends where it is. There's there's one out in Tremoli that's got like six bedrooms and was a B&B, &B, so they all have bathrooms, a big pool, and they're only asking like 155,000. It's amazing. So it, it's really all over the map, but here in Santa Domenica, if you want something that's all done and is a good size, you're talking about probably around 150, 160,000. 
So um, we're inside Casa Cristina here. Now, uh, on this side, there used to be like little pipes coming out of this wall. There was a cistern up there. Okay. And remember you talked about the, where you go and you access the pipes and stuff, and that's what that was. So that will probably be a fountain or something as a little homage to it. And we're keeping the uh, travi, the support, the header. These are the uh, Salvatore's arches, and he salvaged these bricks from a project. These are all hand done. And I don't know where he, he must have a warehouse somewhere where he just salvages all this cool stuff. So there's one, one unit, one bedroom here. Yeah. And then... Yeah, more upstairs, upstairs. More upstairs. This is my favorite bedroom because this one had the balcony that went all the way across. Okay. Yeah. And um, they kept the wall. The rubble. Yeah. It's so pretty. We took the bathroom off, or it was already off before I got here, and there's still the um, support structure for a balcony. So we're gonna put a balcony, which means this person can have a washer and they can put their laundry out, out there, and they'll have a beautiful lateral view of the mountains, which will be nice. Gotcha. Yeah. And then there's one more level. Yep, the mansarda. The bedroom part is here. The bed will be against that wall. It's still a good enough size, tall-wise, you know, to, uh, to do something. This is the Tetonardi. Okay. Now this used to come down here like that. And I said, Antonello, because you're very limited of what you can do in the historic center. Okay. He said, I, I can't get rid of that wall. I'm like, oh. I said, can you notch it? Can you cut it out? He did. And he, and he lowered this. This was high. We started actually um, a little over a year, well, yeah, as soon as the pandemic hit, we started doing the, the channel. And then a year ago, last April, we came over and started really going to town with the people buying properties here. So last I counted, it was, after the first season, it was like 25 properties that we brought people over, we matched them up with the seller and facilitated the sale. Now, I'm not an agent, so I can't sell the property, but I can, you know, do the matchmaking and the marketing and everything else. So, um, yeah, so it was like 25 properties and I don't even know how many now, and there's more down below. So yeah, there's been a huge change in the village and even, you know, Pete and I are even stunned by it. We had no idea how much demand there was for uh, a place in a little medieval village up here in, in Southern Italy, but uh, people are really, really starving for it and they love it when they get here. And the community uh, that came over are the, the nicest, most incredibly giving and creative people that I've ever met. And it's so funny because, um, you know, back in California, I, I only had a few handful of people that I would go to dinner with or whatever. I, they're all here now. Everybody's here. So if I go somewhere else, like I'll, I'll miss all my friends here. We, we, there's always somebody to have dinner with. There's always somebody to do a project with. As far as making a mistake for moving here and buying the place and, and renovating, no, no. Uh, to me, it's a no-brainer. And, and there are certain things in life that I consider no-brainers, right? The cost of the property was so low. The cost of renovations here is ridiculously low. And what you're buying is you're buying the experience. You know, you're not just buying a house, you're buying the experience. And if you look at it that way, because people say, what if you lose money? I'm like, well, you just go make more money. You know, what if you lose money? That's, that's nothing. What if you lose the opportunity? What if you go through life never having bought and renovated an Italian property or made ricotta cheese from scratch? What if you lost those opportunities? Those are priceless. Ah, the language. I, I don't have too much trouble with it. Um, when I was 17, like we were discussing earlier, I, I had to uh, go to a French school and learn French. I had never spoken French or I had taken Spanish, but didn't speak it at all. And uh, went over to Brussels and there was a guy there that was teaching all us sort of, not expats, but you know, people that were there of all different cultures and languages. He was teaching us French. So two and a half hours, twice a week, we would go. And he had a method of teaching that I've just used to learn Italian. And I've been kind of doing that. And it's been working out really, really well. So plus I already spoke French. So if, if you speak French and, and Spanish, you're, you're halfway there already. You already know the sentence structure, you know the grammar, you know a lot of the words are similar or the same. 
And sometimes I'll just make up a, an Italian word, you know, out of English and uh, throw it out there and see if it works. If you put zioni on the end of something, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and it's always good for a laugh. But um, it's actually been quite quite easy for me. The, the, the trickier part has been learning the language, like when I go to translate at the act and the signing, you know, and all of the title language and the legal language. And then, you know, um, I'm, I'm getting a good hang on the on the uh, renovation language, like, you know, what's a ceiling, what's a floor, what's this and that and the other. But uh, every day you learn some more, and the more you talk with people, the better it gets. It's just, uh, it's, I think it's fun, myself. Facciamo un video da Santa Domenica Talao. Possiamo entrare per filmare? Okay. No, I really, I really don't have any regrets other than I just miss my boys and I wish they could be here and, you know, enjoy it with us. It's, it's such a great experience and we always want to share it, which is why we're so happy that the channel was so popular. People are coming over. We can just share this place with everybody. Um, but I would love to share it more with my kids. I really want them to come over and really spend more than two weeks a year here and really get the feel of what it's like to live here because I think they would just love it. But, you know, life is what it is. They've got their jobs and that sort of thing. At some point, hopefully, you know, we're still alive when they have a little more time and we can enjoy it together. Well, the reaction of my family was actually pretty good. I mean, they were, my mom was very, very supportive and I wish she could have come seen it before she died. And same with my dad. I think they really would have loved it here. Um, so I didn't have a whole lot of that. Of course, there's always people that pop up and go, oh, you're crazy for doing this, but it's always somebody who's never been out of their hometown, <laughs> you know, or never been to Italy or never been boots on the ground. A lot of my guys get that, you know, and they will come to me and, and say, you know, and, and people on the channel say that people say I'm crazy for doing this. I'm go, well, have they ever been here? Like you have been here. You have done your research, you've studied it, you've watched all the YouTube videos, and you've done all these things. It's easy to say it's not going to work, but is that an educated it's not going to work, or is that just somebody, you know, pulling it out? I mean, honestly, if the person hasn't done any research and has never even been here, I mean, it takes a lot of gall to kind of pop out with that kind of stuff in my book. Like, you, you haven't educated yourself. How can you tell somebody it's not going to work? I started researching a good year before we came over to look for property. And back then, you know, there wasn't Facebook. We didn't have Facebook and all that stuff. We had, you know, the forums, like the forum, the Scalia forum, and, and the uh, expats in Spain and that kind of thing. I looked all over because I wanted to get a, an idea of the things to look out for. And one of the big things was, you know, don't buy off plan, right? Don't buy something that's not been built yet because you never know if it's ever going to get built. And there were a lot of uh, lawsuits, especially in Spain and certain places in Italy where people had bought, you know, uh, off plan and it never got built. And the contractor took off with their 200,000 euros or whatever. And so that was a big thing. And that's what I always tell people. If you don't see it, don't buy it. I mean, there's probably very great contractors here and everything else, but just wait until it's actually materialized and is pretty close to being done to where if you had to finish it yourself, you could. It, it's not for everybody. It is different, very different. The language is different. Very little English spoken, you know, here where we are. Uh, and then when you get into the Italian, you have the Calabrese dialect. So there are language uh, barriers that you might not find in other parts of Italy, like, you know, up north. I don't know if they have a lot of the dialects and things like that. Um, so it has to be somebody who is really confident in their own abilities to make things work and to get by. Um, you have to be okay with um, working things out and maybe having them be a little different than what you thought which is something we've seen with our clients that come through here. You know, the ones that do really well are the super creative ones, like you said. They, they hit the ground running, you know, and they go, okay, we're gonna do this, 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 and this. And if that doesn't pan out, well, okay, good. Well, we're gonna do this, 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 and this now. And those are the types of people who are really confident in their own abilities to work things out and, um, and really love the process of it. 
if you don't like inconvenience and you just want to move in somewhere and uh, have it be perfect, it's, it's not going to fly. You have to really like the process in order to really, really be, be comfortable here. I think I was actually quite amazed when we got here how welcomed we were. Now, uh, as Americans, we're kind of, uh, we're almost like celebrities here. And, and I asked um, Giacomo, my friend Giacomo in Torture, I said, why? I mean, you know, America's kind of, kind of got a bad rap here and there. And, uh, but everywhere I go, everybody's so happy to meet me because I'm American and I'm here and that kind of thing. And what he said, and I never read this in any history book, he said, after the war, when everything was destroyed, the Americans came in with the, the shiploads of grain and building materials and they helped rebuild. I never read that in history class. I was never told that. And he said, a lot of them, especially the older people, have never forgotten. And I was like, that made me intensely proud that that our ancestors or whatever did that for this area. They didn't just destroy it and run away. They came back and they helped rebuild. And then it's, it's given us so much goodwill here. And I, it's just the nature of the people to be loving and welcoming and trusting and wonderful. You know, your word is your bond here. Uh, sometimes I have to chase people to pay them, you know? They're like, no, no, tomorrow, no, the next day. And I'm like, you know, no, I'll forget. Don't, I want to pay you now because if I forget, then, you know, that's my word. So uh, it's really quite, quite cute and fun the way, the way they are. I, I totally agree with that. And you know, the generosity coming out of our guys on the channel. I mean, you know, that olive oil uh, thing, you know, Antonello, the architect, walking by this place going, oh, this, this olive mill, someday we'll have the funds. Someday the Comune will have the funds to buy this and turn it into a museum. And I started thinking, hmm, we're going to get that money, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it for you. And I didn't tell him. And then we did the GoFundMe. And it just kept rolling and getting bigger, you know, and and we made enough to purchase the two properties, not only the mill, but the, the apartment above, which will be turned into the farmer's house and turn it into an actual museum here in Santa Domenica Talao. And uh, when I, I could not believe people who have never been here, who will never come here, were donating money because they wanted to see this thing take place. They wanted to donate to this beautiful village and and make people happy. I mean, it was the most wonderful thing. I mean, I don't know if you were watching the channel um, last December, but you know, I'd have my Santa hat on going, we're up to this amount, you know? And it was just a lot of fun and people got into the game of it and the fun of it. It was just the most incredible thing. It's kind of a no brainer for people who really are looking for a safe and a good place to raise their kids, going back to the values, you know, the. The, um, the community and treating people well and um, helping your neighbor and all of those things. These are things people learn in this community that I, I don't, I'm, I'm afraid we're losing that in America in a lot of places.